Hi there, hi again. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will just be reading the personal statement that I wrote when I applied to medical school. Well, I really hesitated to do this video because I don't think that you should necessarily be referring to other people's personal statements because if you refer to too many other personal statements, it tends to distract you from what you want to write, from your personal experiences that you can bring to your own personal statement that's just unique to you. Everyone's personal statements will be very different. And I think you should focus on your own personal experiences. However, a lot of people have requested for it. And I just think, well, for people who are writing it for the first time or just literally have no idea what to write, it might just be helpful to kind of know what kind of structure that other people use or to gain a bit of inspiration. But I don't want people to be using my personal statement as a prime example or as the perfect example because it isn't perfect. It just so happens that it kind of got me an interview, but it's not the only thing that got me an interview. So I just don't want people to think that this is what they have to aspire towards or this is the perfect example because there's just no perfect example. So without further ado, let's just get started. I will read the personal statement once through without commenting on it and then maybe I'll go back and comment on it at the end. In the transition from childhood to youth, I became increasingly enraptured by the workings of the human mind and body and what it means to lead an ephemeral life. Intrigued by the complexities of life and death, I voraciously perused volumes by Paul Kalanithi, Artuga Wande and Siddhartha Mukherjee. These doctors have a wealth of knowledge and expertise, yet they still find the need to probe deeper to investigate the concept of mortality. Such perspectives have shaped my conviction that medicine will be a platform for me to define my worth and to make a positive difference to humanity. It excites me that medicine is not just a university course, but a lifelong endeavour, a sacred responsibility to serve and to lead. Learning about cancer and infectious diseases in H2 biology picked my curiosity. I searched up articles and video courses, including Introduction to the Biology of Cancer, offered by Johns Hopkins University, to satisfy my insatiable thirst for knowledge. Enthralled, I took H3 biology as an additional subject, delving deeper into concepts like the human microbiota. The anatomy and physiology workshop at NTU LKC Medicine transported me into a riveting world of clinical terms that awoke in me the yearning to unravel the mysteries of the human body, layer by layer. Exploring the gastrointestinal and cardiorespiratory systems filled me with awe that each part of the human body could be so complicated, yet fit together in perfect synchrony. As I deciphered chest x-rays, I realised how abnormalities like pneumonia might disrupt normal function. These experiences have equipped me with a strong scientific foundation which will facilitate my learning in the medicine course. Beyond books and intellect, I saw the compassion and dexterity inherent in medicine and actively sought first-hand experience. As a volunteer carer at a CC hospice for more than a year, I interacted closely with patients while observing the work of nurses and doctors in palliative care. Diaper changing and cleaning patients who had lost their independence revealed to me how acutely I wished to save others from the abyss of declining health. By gaining the ability to treat these maladies, I can then alleviate their suffering. Befriending patients and sitting with them for hours to keep them company reaffirmed my belief that caring for emotional needs is just as vital as physical treatment. At the National Healthcare and Medical Symposium, I drew the most inspiration from a sharing by Dr. Chua Young, Director of Global Clinic, a non-profit that brings medical care to rural areas on humanitarian trips. Immediately, without a doubt, I knew this was a path I would pursue, no matter how much it took. Deeply moved by the affliction faced by the impoverished, I vowed that I would bring medical treatment to anyone ill enough to need it, whether rich or poor. I hope to make medicine an equalising force, one which connects people in the common desire for health and happiness. Representing my school in badminton for six years and joining the student council for two years trained my resilience and discipline while showing me that strength is derived from a team uniting towards a shared goal. By initiating and leading a service learning project to help vulnerable foreign workers, I learned that being an agent of change 
begins with the courage to try new things. As a bicultural studies program scholar and a Prime Minister's Book Prize recipient, I believe that my receptiveness to both Eastern and Western ideas will allow me to practice medicine with cross-cultural empathy in this diverse and globalised world. I have come to see medicine not as a profession, but as a mission greater than myself. I hope to be a doctor who not only cures the body, but also provides nourishment and inspiration for the heart, mind and soul. To achieve this, I look upon the prospect of studying medicine with alacrity and will treasure this privilege with an inquisitive mind and an open heart. Now I'll go back to comment a bit on my personal statement or what I thought of each paragraph. So for the first paragraph, I started by talking about my own reflections on life and death and how I've read many books. So I think there's no best way to start a personal statement, but I would recommend that you really dig deep into yourself and ask yourself, what is it that really, really changed you or really motivated you to want to do medicine? Because you want the introduction to be impactful, you want it to be something memorable that the interviewer can immediately establish an impression of you because admissions officers will be reading thousands of personal statements and if your introduction is not captivating enough, they'll get bored. So for me, unfortunately, I didn't have a personal experience, not a first-hand experience. So I, I've never had a major illness or I've never witnessed someone else going through a major illness. I've never had that intimate experience with medicine or healthcare that some other applicants may have had. So if you've had that kind of experience, you can definitely write about it at the start of your personal statement, but just try to make it as impactful as possible and focus on how it changed you or how it motivated you to pursue medicine. And in the second paragraph, I talked a lot about the academic aspect, about my passion for science and how I'm really interested to learn more. So I think the reason why I started with that, that being my second paragraph, is because I was applying to Oxford, so that was my first choice. And basically, I had this impression, or I heard people telling me that Oxford really prioritises academics, so they really look a lot at your brain and your intellectual curiosity. And in the third paragraph, I talked about my volunteering experience, which also kind of passed as my work experience, because if you're applying to the UK medical schools, most of them would expect you to have done some work experience. So for me, I found it really hard to get an actual work experience in a hospital because I didn't have any connections to anyone who was working in a hospital. And the kind of programs that we could apply for, I think in Singapore were really short, so maybe a few days. And also because of COVID now, you may not really have the chance to go into hospitals as much as before. So if you really can't find a hospital attachment, you can try to look for volunteering or going into community hospitals because they'll be really willing to take in volunteers. You'll probably get the chance to actually interact with patients a lot more. And in the fourth paragraph, I talked about listening to a speaker that really inspired me. So I think um, in this paragraph, I was a bit too idealistic. Looking back, I would probably have written it differently if I were to write it now. I think now from the perspective of someone who's come along way through the application and from you know people who might be interviewing applicants I think they won't really see this in the same light because it's just a bit too idealistic like if you want to change the world through medicine it's not necessarily the best path for you to go along if you want to change the world if you know what I mean but I think the kind of altruism or the kind of empathy that you have for other people is something that you can include in your personal statement so it's important to kind of strike a balance between knowing what medicine is really about what the work really entails, how difficult it is, how challenging it is, the kind of lack of work-life balance, not having enough money in the first few years and stuff like that, while at the same time showing that you're really passionate. So you should have a balance between being realistic and showing your passion. And in the next paragraph, which is the fifth paragraph, I focused on my extracurricular activities, so achievements outside of academics, community projects, stuff like that. So if you do any sports or if you're part of any teams in school, part of any competitions, it's kind of useful to mention that because it can show leadership, teamwork, communication, things like that, that they are looking for in applicants. Of course, a common mistake that I see when I review people's personal statements is that they will name these qualities in their in their personal statements, so they will say that um, so through this experience I learned leadership or through this experience I was able to display teamwork and 
communication. And I think that is not wrong. It's definitely not wrong. Um, you definitely had to apply some of these skills or qualities or traits that you developed through these experiences. But the thing is that just naming them is not enough. It's not convincing enough. You have to specifically write about what you did. They see you as a person through what you have done, not what you claim you are. Of course, looking back, I think there were certain mistakes that made as well. I don't think I would have just brushed so lightly across them. Um, I think I wasn't specific enough in talking about my experiences and what I did. And finally, the conclusion. So looking back, I think my conclusion is a bit too long. If I write it again, I would have shortened the conclusion to save on the word count and just focused more on the other aspects of my application. However, I think it's quite important to have a good conclusion, to at least have a conclusion and not just end off with the last paragraph. You want to kind of wrap things up to show that it has a kind of structure and well, don't agonize too much over it because I think I really agonized over it. I agonized over every single word. But I think when it gets to the conclusion, the admissions officers are kind of already know whether they want you or not, whether it's a good personal statement or not, they kind of already know. They just want you to end off properly. So one or two sentences should be enough. So that's all for reading out my personal statement. I'll also put the link in the description below for those of you who want to read it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. All the best for your applications and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.